You've been watching Wimbledon. Yeah, I watch we watch a little bit. I was surprised. I wasn't going to watch that much, but um, I don't know. I, it's weird. You, you take a breather. It's probably like you for the videos too. Well, all the stuff that you do, you got to take a little breather and then recharge. And I mean, to be honest, I've watched more matches this year. I think I told you last time, watch more matches this year than I have in combined five, 10 years. Um, but then wow. now that I start doing that analysis stuff, it starts making sense to me. So like real briefly, like I'll put it out there because people are probably getting confused, or at least that's what I get from sometimes where which box is what you get the do side, you get the ad side. Mm -hmm. And then to be honest, um, you can micro cut these different ways. Not so much here. Like you can make big, you can make a box here, almost like here. You can cut these into different boxes when you're doing drills. Um, Cause the other thing too. So I think I told you earlier, at least I wrote earlier that um, it's only going to take me a matter of time. I'll find the patterns and I'll find what Djokovic is doing. And he's basically doing a form of box training. And so for instance, I watched team the other day and team was, he does what I do spot training. He's like, his coach tells him maybe, put a cone here on this side of the court, put a cone on that side of the court, maybe put a cone in the middle. And he just like powers to the cones. And then if you yeah. look at him, his, his drop placement, nothing's like Djokovic. I mean, I hate to say it, but like Djokovic is just doing something that nobody else is doing. And you hear the announcers say, and I laugh, everyone's like wondering what he's doing. I'm telling you he's box training. And like, if you ever tried, have you tried doing box training? No, it's tough. It's not easy. So for instance, like I'll tell you with some of the juniors I work with, this week we did I did I put a box in the middle and I just cut it I put a box over here can you see that right yeah a uh, box here and what I told the kids I said for starters and this is based off what I saw from Wimbledon from Djokovic's matches I said the player over here I said what I want you to do if the ball lands in this box that shot can only go here if it lands in this box that shot can only go here these people can hit whatever box they want. So if they want the ball to come back to them, they'll hit more over here. But I told them no more than three shots, move it after three. So the other guy's getting a shot, but they'll start doing this. Well, then we'll do that for a little bit. And, and so here's what I'm starting to find out. Five UTRs is they struggle. They struggle. Like my daughter was hitting with another like five basically. And I was getting on them. I'm like, look, guys, let's go. Let's get consistent. This is ridiculous. We're tournament players. We're supposed to be able to do this. And then I'm thinking to myself, like, a lot of the stuff I say is, like, like 9, 10 UTR and above. Like, a lot of it's, like, for the younger ones, it's harder. For the weaker players, it's harder. But you can take the same drill and you can say, okay, the shot's over here. Instead of going cross, you bring it just back to the same side. So like it's it's a fun drill, but it's like I should feel like it, I had a lot of fun doing it this week. The comparison in game styles and also in the the way they've been trained, like both Dominic team, it's with massive power and spin, but goes really for targets. I think most people can see that it's pretty uh, instinctual even to understand it from a casual spectator. Like he plays aggressively to certain like zones, but but not really with this kind of chess game that Djokovic is using, while Djokovic. He's, he's winning his matches almost like a bot. It makes him look almost like an AI, you know? He's, he's like, he's playing it differently than anyone else. You can really tell. Like, like I have some other coaches will chit-chat and they're like, oh, you're getting too into this. Like, this is not what the pros are doing. I'm like, well, it's what Djokovic is doing. I don't know what the other guys. So with Kokonakis, I think I wrote it when I wrote that piece or however you say his name, but either way, <laughs> Djokovic literally played him cross courts. Every ball I came for hit a cross court. He was just pulling them off the wides. And I was just laughing about it because he's like trying to like it's not rocket science. It's like some of the, the, the trollers are right. This isn't rocket science. I'm like, yeah, it isn't, but you <laughs> go out and do some box training. You do 20 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, an hour, and tell me how it goes. Because even when I was doing box training, I'm like, I don't know what what I would consider myself, but I'm definitely a 10. Mm. But um at 47 years old but like still i don't train or i just teach but even when i'm doing some of the box training i'm just off a little bit i'm just off and i'm like man and to get that precision to even just bring in just a little bit <laughs> it's not like you're going to do like a, a box drill that um and then on a saturday and all of a sudden you got it it's like it takes that's why so one thing i, I laughed about was um i was talking with a buddy the other day and, and i said look at who jovich brought into his team 
who's the first person he brought in other than Vita was Becker. Why do you bring in Becker? It's to one, to work on his volleys, two, to understand a volley mentality. So now he knows how to, because that's that was like one of the best volleys of his generation. Then he brings in Agassi. Well, it was Agassi, but the best baseline of his generation. So he understands the baseline, how these, how he starts constructing his points, because everyone knows when you watch Agassi, he was very talented, and all of a sudden he became really good. We start winning those majors later in his career. And then who's he have now? Even Isbich, who's the pretty much the best server of his generation. So he's understanding the mentality of these guys and they're paying, like he's paying them, but at the same time, so when he plays Kyrgios, he's like, he knows exactly what Kyrgios is going to do because even Isbich was, I mean, in my opinion, even Isbich, well, they're probably about the same, right? What would you say? You know? Yeah, I mean, serve wise, but I think Kyrgios tennis is better. I mean, Goran has to do it, yeah. you know, apologize, but but if you look at Goran's matches, it's it's not really on Kyrgios level of ball striking, right? But uh, he was much more living off of his serve. I think Kyrgios lives, lives off his serve, but he also has like great ground strokes, you know, so I think it really helps. One time I, so I was at the, they used to call it the pilot pen or whatever, the tournament at Yale before, um, before the U.S. Open. I was watching even as back in the day, he was playing Jimmy Connors in a practice set. And that's the one mm. that year that Jimmy Connors made that run when he was older. <laughs> Every, even as a service game was 40 love. It was like, boop, 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 boop. he's ace, 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 ace. And then every return game is just cracking returns. It was like really ugly tennis. And I was laughing about it. And then to be honest, like, like I think even his was up four, one, and then he loses a set like six, four, seven, five to Jimmy Connors. I was like, how can you lose to that guy? Like, come on, you're like a young guy. Like you're, and then, but he was just serving bombs and he was just probably just, now I'm just going to practice serving crack returns and get out of here. <laughs> one of the other, one, a couple of drills I'll kind of like show you this. Like I said, like I do the drills. I have the drills on video and then people ask for them. And I'm like, like it's such a pain i have to pay somebody to like hey can you edit my videos and put them on because i don't have something someone can do in five minutes it takes me like two hours i just don't have two hours to like just keep popping around and trying to start a youtube channel it's like such a pain you cut this if you're just hitting cross court, I mean, you can take a pocket you can take a spot you can go here and then you can take a middle spot you can even cut this into fours you can go here or you can go here you can do it it's like a triple combo and what happens is, so you ever play the game Simon when you were a kid, like the, the game where it's like, you don't know this game. So what happened is there was this goofy game, you know, for kids at home and you bought it, had like a blue, a yellow, a green, and maybe an orange or a red, maybe it was a red. And what it was, was a memory game. So what you did is it would just spit out like, like patterns and you would just see who could go the longest. Well, the thing I've been thinking about lately I want to say lately, more like the last six months, two years, there's concentrate. I call them concentration combos. Like I'll never, so say you and I go out and hit and I just, mm -hmm. okay, I want to go one, two, three, repeat one, two, three, repeat one, two, three. Like it seems easy, but as you do it and you go through it three, four times, I would never play a point like that per se. I'm just doing it to increase my, my memory. So my memory of doing it, then you play free ball. Free ball is like, okay, now I just erase all this and I try to do the combos while we're playing a cross court game where we could play a full court game. It's important to do the, the concentration drills for your memory. Like if you don't do the concentration drills, you're in, in essence, you're like wasting time, but, um, but they kind of coexist with the real play with the live play. And like I said, like you can do any combination off this, you can start here and you can go the other way and go back here. You can, I don't know if you'd ever really want to, you can do power. I call them power pulls where sometimes I'll like, I like to do these cause I like to work on cracking balls to this corner. Like pulling, I like, I like hitting powers over here. So I'll go just a one, a one, two, like a big, big deep middle and I'll just rip the ball aside, but it seems simple. And you could do it as a fed ball, but fed ball is not the same. Fed ball is kind of like, it's like a ball machine. If you do a live ball, you can get a lot out of it. Um, so there's like half court ones. And that's, this is basically what Djokovic did to Kokonakis. He literally just played him out of the cross courts and would just move him around here. And then when Kokonakis hit here, he would just repeat the same thing on the other side. It was comical. It was almost like he was doing a drill during a match. And I thought like, I hate to say this about the other guy, but I'm like, Djokovic probably looking at it like, okay, I'm going to get some cross courts in. I'm going to work on this one, two, threes, one, two, threes, and just one, two, three them the whole time. And I was like, I was like, I was like laughing. I was like, this is like comical. If you start looking at it like a box, like you're thinking in tennis and halves, like deuce and add, you're, you're 20 years behind. If you're thinking in thirds, like triples, like say, so people want to, 
like Agassi, this is what Agassi started doing. This is where Jovich, when he had Agassi, this is where he started. He started breaking the baseline at the thirds. So when Jovich won his first stretch of, of Grand Slams, we had a good stretch. He was playing thirds. Now he's playing quads. So when I told you before, I was talking about quads, and I was thinking, well, maybe Djokovic plays <laughs> plays a, a service deuce different than a service add, different than a return, than an than a add return. He wasn't – like I thought he was doing that. I was looking at the wrong thing. I was like, instead of that, it's like I, he cuts it into fours. And not if not, he cuts into sixes. Like I showed like the one, two, three. You get the one, two, three. Or like when I send that that uh, I sent that email yesterday, I was just joking around. I was just picking on that one guy. But it was, so the one guy system where it's based on depth, where it's based on zones, hmm. that's the old voluntary system, and it's a good system to work off. But you don't want to live in that system for a long time. If you like, meaning like, if everyone's doing that system, then what's the difference? Who's hitting deeper balls, right? But now, if you look at team, I think he plays that system with his spots. And this is where I say, like, if people are crazy, if they don't, if they don't start cutting fours, if you don't start cutting the, the baseline to fours, you're going to be behind because the guys who are like, so Medvedev plays that box three, I call it, when he gets his, he has his recycle. So if he gets hurt, he finds box three. So he's going to find that box. Brooksby does it, but look what happened to Brooksby. Everyone knows it. Everyone's onto it. So then I'm like, I'm going to blame it on you. And you just posting my, my BS because they're like, oh, this is what he's doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, kidding but because these guys know that he's that he goes his out is go to box three and so they just sit there and camp out and they just start cracking balls out of box three they start picking on his movement and like if you saw me like he was struggling this past uh clay court season and he was struggling in the grass court and then he disappeared now so it's funny so he disappears in the clay comes at the end he disappears right now and he's getting ready for the hard court season it's funny how different players approach different things. So that's interesting. So the other thing too, I'll, I can briefly get into is what I call like the four ball system that, that uh, Djokovic uses. So for one, if you, if you go on half court, if you think of tennis and half courts, you're, you're using one die. You're not using two dice. You're using one die. And you, you like, say if I, if I roll a die and I said, can you pick a one to six? You could probably get a good percentage of stuff. You'll probably say three, say four, say whatever. You'll probably get a better chance. Now, if I have two dice and I say, we'll pick a six, well, you're not going to, the combinations are so much different that it's going to be harder, harder to connect on some of the combinations. So if you're talking about four ball, I mean, you could simply, there's any one ball, four balls that are just like moving like one, two, three, four, you can do stuff like that. You can, like, there's some drills I do when I, when I call that one drill, walk the dog. I do, I have a middle base, I cut in the thirds. And what I do is I'll, I'll hit like one, two, three to recycle. So the other guy's hitting back to me, back to my spot. One, two, we're going across, three in the center, four, and then five. And then we recycle back to center and then we just keep walking it. We just walk the, we're hitting live ball, but we're hitting solid. We're not hitting babies, baby shots, but we're not hitting like hundred mile hour shots either. We're seeing how fast we can rally the ball and control one, two, three, four, five. And the same numbers are coming down here. It's not, it's a fun drill, but like what happens is think about all the training, what everybody's doing, they're doing cross courts, you know? So when Kokonakis comes out, it's, it's almost like, he just comes out, he serves well, he redirects, and he plays cross courts. Like, that's, his, that's the essential, but that's, like, probably 70% of the pros on tour plus the players. Even more, the players that are outside the tour, even more, the players that are, like, junior tennis, they'll play depth, and they'll be like, well, it's like the comments on the, the trolls when they're like, well, there's something to be said about consistency in this. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. You know, you're, you're a three UTR, you're a four UTR. Yeah, you just push that ball deep, you'll be all right until you hit a banger and then the banger is going to control you and just run you around. Like a guy like, uh, for example, Djokovic, he's preparing for a match for, uh, he, he knows he's playing Kokinakis. Like, what do you think he discusses with his coach? Is this like the systems like this or like, well, how, what do we do to, to beat this guy and why do we do this this way? What would you think? Kokinakis is like 6'5". So I would say from my looking at what he said, they said, we got to hit center, we got to stretch him or mm. we got to, he never stretched him right away. He always returned center. So it's easy to kill on the return. It's a lot of the combos are return pattern combos. The serve plus ones are obviously different. Like the only time you're going to use combos in a serve 
in a service game, you're playing like Cressy, you're playing a big server, you, even a Curios, you're using your service game to break them down, which you don't yeah. want to do, but it's like a pain in the butt, but you're going to do it because you have to. If you're sitting there trying to be aggressive on your serve and then he's being aggressive, you're not playing any points. It's like, like, you know, he's only going to be, look at the final, look at the final, the first uh, set, he was painting lines slowly mm. start to, he started to crack. I mean, I still thought even if Kyrgios won the first two sets, like Djokovic wins the next three. So it's like the center match. Because he has that extra consistency, I guess, right? I mean, it's like he can keep doing this for... So it comes back to those concentration combos. So coming back to what you said, like, what are they going to plan for? They're like, okay, this guy doesn't move well out of the corners. Let's attack the corners. Well, Djokovic had a same, similar game plan against Sinner to start. Look what happened. He got smashed in the first two sets. He tried to play out of the corners and play cross courts. And I think Sinner's got, like, the, one of the strongest cross court games in tennis. Like, he's got... Yeah. Yeah. Very solid spin, very solid depth, and he's just a very talented player. He's very all-around talented. Djokovic learned that that wasn't going to work, so what Djokovic did is just started going to box three with change-up. She changed the pace, slice, top spin, deep, deep, slice. When he got hurt, instead of going, like, he, I laughed, I talked about this today, he got, when he got hurt in the corner in the first couple of sets, he was putting balls over here, and center was just smoking him. Suddenly he gets hurt over here. He started taking this ball to this box here, and it was neutralizing. So every, for whatever reason, this box, so everyone's got a box they don't like. I don't know if they know it, because if you think of it in boxes, sitters, that's his box. You put him over there, he just misses random shots. He, you know, he's still a great player, obviously. If you play him out of the cross, it's a little bit different. But if you play him, he just, for whatever reason, this ball goes back straight. When he goes here, he pulls it. I mean, Djokovic in the beginning, sometimes it seems like he's a little bit lethargic almost, like where he's just like, you know, warming up in the match. And he was giving Sinner maybe, you know, not enough credit. He was giving him too much space to hit a winner. And, and Sinner was feeling the ball big as a, you know, as a melon kind of. So he was just smoking down winners. Uh, and then as soon as he started playing a little bit uglier tennis, like a lot of the down the middle, I noticed that as well. It was a lot of stuff, slice, down the middle. And then only when he felt like, okay, he's not going to hit a winner, he could stretch him. Like he was a bit tired, maybe seven strokes in, he could actually go a bit deep, like dip deeper to the corners. He's really figuring it out as you go along in that match. That was pretty clear. Yeah. And so he's, so the, the point with all the combo stuff um, with the boxes, when he does the box training is he can just come out and have certain boxes. He's got all the boxes down. So he'll come out, like I said, every match was different. It was kind of funny what he did to each guy. Is this something like decent or had somewhat advanced club level players can incorporate, like thinking around, the four or three boxes. I guess three is easier to start with. Uh, using the middle box a bit more because people are almost like allergic to hitting in the middle uh, on, on some club levels. They try to go for too much generally all the time, right? Those are what I call, I mean, those are stretching drills where you, what he did a lot was working out of, a, say, a cross. Like some, so a lot of these guys will play cross-court tennis and they're going to play cross-court tennis and they're just thinking cross-court because that's all they do in their training. So Djokovic takes those guys and he just puts, he just basically moves one, two, three, and maybe he might go back with a four here. Either way, he can, he can recycle it if he wants to like get out of this. So he, say he can go one, two, three, back, four, this way. His four ball combos are ridiculous. What he does, and it's like, he rarely will double up. He'll rarely hit one, then two. He will, but it's like, he'll do it as like, like a change of, it's like, I call it win the battle. I mean, lose the battle, win the war. Um, you're going to lose a few of those. Like, so for instance, if he had three shots to the same shot, the Kokonakis program cracked a winner. Like the few times he hit winners was because Joe would just hit one box three mm. times in a row. And that's what he wants. So that's why, that's why he was pushing him out of the corners. because he's not, he's going to go for something silly. He's going to go for dumb mistakes. He'll hit a winner here and there, but he knows he's gonna make some mistakes. Drills like this, like you can, do, these are just like drills where you're just hitting one, two, three, four. When you're just mixing up those fours, there's even ones where you go to the corner, one handed backhand. So you can do what outsides. You can start, if you start out here, the guy returns this way, you just take it back here. They go back here, you go back here. No matter where the next ball goes, you just go back to outsides and you just keep them on the stretch. He, Cause with the one handers, that guy had a good forehand. That guy was a ripper. Yeah, yeah, big, big time. Guy, I looked at him, I said, that guy would be top 50. I don't, wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be a really solid player, I guess, if he stays healthy. You think what, what makes Djokovic so good is this understanding and this, 
I guess, attention to detail. I mean, he is attention to detail when it comes to what he puts in his body, what he puts this, what it's like. He's very professional about with everything he does. But it's, it's this chess game thinking around where to place the ball and like how to play the opponent. I think is that like what you say would be the outstanding um, feature of his game? I mean, obviously, he, he can put it there with amazing depth. I've seen him practice live uh, and it's like, like it's impressive how deep every shot he hits. Like it's just such good depth. I've seen other pros practice as well. I don't think anyone hits with that consistent depth of Djokovic. I, I've never seen that. Like he's so precise with, with the balls. Yeah. And then so think about like if you're just hitting cross, we, you and I are just hitting cross course, there's a big area. Well, there's no really, it's just, it's a huge, to me, it's a it's huge area. Like I would, I always said this, even to coaches when I was a kid, or a kid when I was younger, I'd be like, I want to hit smaller areas. They're like, why would you want to do that? They're like, what are you, what are you doing? Why, why would you ever want to do that? I'm like, why not? Because I want to be able to pick people apart and move it around. So for instance, when you, you use thirds, when you do, when you play it in threes, you're adding an element to it. Like if you play me in cross courts, it's just like it's like with that the the zone tennis. It's like you play me in cross courts, the ball goes short, you attack. Fine. But if you start playing in combos, you're you're adding an element to the strategy. If you play in quads, you're adding another element. Now the guy has no like the reason why people are so confused with Djokovic is because of his four bo- his four box attacks. He can use two boxes. Like so, for instance, even another one he was using a lot of I think box one, box three. So when he was he'll use here and here out of whatever he'll he'll come to these these spots and he'll keep hitting only two boxes of the court when you start it like i'm telling you if you just take this and you just go watch his matches and you start charting where his balls are landing you're like holy crap you're like it's all like here and it's here it's not like it's not so sporadic like if you, like i said if you watch team the balls seem to drop in weird spots or if you see a player who plays cross court slide you'll see the ball drop in almost this, like the spot like in the middle of the side mm-hmm. there'll be a lot of balls landing here and that's like tee off city it's like anyone like a team you're going to hit him three balls in that one spot he's going to smoke it um he's going to put it away so another drill i wrote down and some of these are drills i mean you can turn into games very easily you're staying out this is a no zone this is a, you're not hitting here and here you can alternate them any way you want so there's three boxes right there that you can use. I mean, if you're playing a game, you could have this as open. That guy can only use the three boxes. So this one is like I to do it in a quick session. We'll see how it all turns out. But um, say I hit to I can hit to this box and this box, right? And then what I read on the other side, there's this box and there's a game where we only hit into these boxes. This guy over here can only hit to those two boxes. This guy can only hit to these two boxes. Those are fun games too. And it just teaches you, um, I mean, one, it teaches you discipline. It's not super fun to be limited if you're a power player, but it teaches the power players to calm down a little bit. Hit deep, hit deep, hit deep. Next thing you know, you're getting freebies and you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize I could just hit deep, deep center and the guy's mm-hmm. going to Freebie. So, how do uh, do your students react to the drills? Like, do they find this fun? Do they find this like interesting, new, different from what they're used to? They like it. The problem I have around here is like, so for instance, like I told you, I coach college tennis and whatnot. Mm. I get frustrated because a lot of the kids are education based, so they get to like eight, nine, ten UTR, and they're not going pro. They don't like like I want a kid that wants to go pro. Like even my own daughter, like I was even questioning like her work ethic and whatnot and but i'm like what am i gonna do be a jerk dad and just scream at her and tell her you gotta get on the tennis court the hard part for me is like i was like i hate to lose i mean i'm not psycho crazy like a type personality where it's like i need to win i don't care but i i'm competitive i don't mind losing i'm just gonna make you work for it like even when i golf i'm not the best golfer but i'm, I'm decent but i hate i'm not gonna give stuff away for free but I do have mental lapses where I just get a little cranky. You just miss a chip or something. You just like go bonkers. You're on the green and two and next thing you bogey the whole, it like eats you up mentally. So like people who don't golf don't understand that kind of thing. So here's a drill we did today. We just messed around with it today. This is what I got out of Wimbledon too. One of the drills. So you get these boxes here. You get these, these middle boxes. You totally don't even worry about the other corners of the court. So a concentration drill is just simple. So you know how like you get the bigger court. Remember we talked about that drill where I I, t- I was like joking around how you'll you do that warm up drill where it's like you'll hit cross course and I'll hit down the lines, but we make the sure butterfly, yeah. 
Now, if you cut it into this, in the centers, this is what Joe Rich does a lot too. This is like one of his other patterns. So just playing the two boxes. So, and then the other guy will do it too. You see center do it. So he hits, so the drill is you go just from here. This guy goes to here, this guy goes to here, that guy goes to here, but you can rip. You can rip through the center because you're not chasing stuff down. So you can go, you can work on your depth and center. So now take away all that. And so I, I made the kids drill for like a half hour, like rotating around different players because just to show them different ball flights, you know, some kids are weaker, some kids are stronger. And then what I did after was I made them just use these, these boxes, like this middle of the court. And I said, you know, play regular scoring, 15, 30, 40, deuce, play ads, and you can only use the middle. Now, the only problem with that is some kids will get away with pushing a little bit. Mm. So I'll tell them, okay, the ball in short, point goes open. So if you want to push and you want to be thinking you're going to be a good player and, and you're getting away with beating a couple of players here and there and a couple of points, I'll tell the bangers they can go open if the ball goes short. Just to teach, yep. teach them a lesson. That kind of tends to kind of annoying. But I'm always like teaching kids how to beat the pushers. Like, for instance, like I'll see like some of the posts that came out or online. Like I don't YouTube that much, but it'll you know, get lazy. I just fart around the phone and just watch some YouTube. And they'll be like, this is how, this is five ways to beat a pusher. This is five ways. I'm like, buddy, I like, you want to, like, I was going to, I do the drill. I have it on my video or on my phone, but I'll show you a really quick video for people out there, how to beat a pusher. I'll show you a game. That's fun. And I didn't even realize, like, so for me, I do this game and I didn't even realize it was a pusher game. Like, so what happens is I'll put a couple of cones out here, right? So I'll put a cone out here and put a cone out here. We can only play through the center until one of us misses. Once one of us misses, the point goes open. So what you're doing is like when you have a pusher and you pin them deep and then the ball comes short, just pound it. You just put them away. But otherwise you're, you're playing a pusher and there's lobbing stuff back at you and you lob stuff back and you're like, there's really no purpose to it. So when you, when you centralize it through center to center, there's one, that's one version of it is if it goes outside on either court. So say, say you're down here, I'm up here. You miss a shot just a little off here. What you like, and I hit it, like, and I don't open it up and I hit it back to you and you just crank to the corner because it doesn't matter. Whoever misses, the point's open. If you don't want to use your, your cheat code, whatever, then I'll use it. You know, so mm -hmm. like you put that ball back to me, I go, one of the ones we did today, like very briefly, but I'll work on it maybe next week more. I like these one drills where I only play out of a cross. If you miss inside, inside here, it still goes back to this box. But what you're waiting for is an opportunity to just pull to this box, then the point goes open. It doesn't go open until you pull to the box. And those are simple ones. Um, as far as like, when you talk about club players and stuff like that, I mean, I think I told you that one of the bigger problems we see with the club players is they just play a lot of sets. They don't work on anything. And that the same problem persists every single week. You see them, you don't see them for like, a, I'll be outside right now until about like September, October. I'll go inside, still playing the same tennis. You know, like I look at, I tell the kids I work with, or even like my daughter, I'll be like, summertime's time to get better. If you're not getting better, somebody else is. And that's the time you're going to work on one aspect, if not two aspects to get out of the summer. And then it usually takes, tennis is funny. It takes like, so all the work you put in the summer, it takes October, November, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, that's it. Now I got it. You know, it takes all that time of training to get there. The club players, I mean, you can simply play big targets. So even if a club player is here, like say, you know, like a 4-0 or whatever, you can hit one box and have them start learning how to like pinpoint stuff. Like even just two box hitting, just have the guy just alternate here. He gets a little bit more out in front, pulls the shoulder a little bit, then he keeps the shoulder a little back. As long as they start learning how to control the shots, that's huge. Um, for instance, like if the guy watches this podcast, he'll probably pick on me a little bit. But I had one of my hitters, like a four or five. After I was done last Thursday, he stuck around and I played some points against him. And what I did to him was I literally – so when you play club players, I just pinned them in this box. Every point, I just pinned them in the box. Like, like, and I just kept them over here. When he opened stuff up, then I opened stuff up. But like the other thing too is like, even if, so here's another trick. If I go to, if I hit to the four or five guy here and then here, he'll attack right away. If I go here, 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 
here. I literally, no matter where he puts me, I just keep hitting through this box here. He crumbles. He's going to make a mistake or he's going to, he's going to expose something on the court. And what I'm doing is trying to hypnotize him, put him to sleep with like four or five balls in this box. I do it enough times in the first three or four games. Once I start pulling shots early, he's not expecting it. Or like when I was redirecting on him later on a few times, I wasn't crushing redirects. I was just hitting them solid and they're winners. And I just laughed, but I'm like, that's hypnosis. I just hypnotize you. I just trick your brain into thinking this. And then later I took that, but I'm going to say in, in a way, in a higher version, that's what Djokovic is doing with his combos. He's using certain combos, hypnotizing the guy. Like, so for instance, with, with center, after he's getting hosed, and then he went three box and set three, he gets up a break. And what's he do? He wins a set on the forehand corner. So he goes back to these two boxes on the forehand side for for the rest of the set. What's he do when set four starts? He goes back to the three box, gets up the break. Then he goes back to these two boxes and attacks those boxes. By that time, he, he's like, I don't know how much center where his brain is at, but those are tough. I mean, to, to mix up the boxes, like I said, like dice, it's very hard. When you have combinations, when you have four to five ball combinations, you, you can take one, two, three, four. You can go one, two, three, four. You can keep mixing up the, con like think about how many combinations you can make to those boxes. Now think about like, if you play tennis and halves, there's no combinations. You're like, oh, me hit here, me hit there. Like I think there's also a point to, to learning because I tried this box play now after we've been talking about it a few times and it gives you a target. So it helps you hit with more purpose and also easier when you know you have a target. Like it's much easier to focus. Like, okay, I need to hit in this box. I noticed when I was playing points that I was like my consistency was increasing because I had this mind, okay, I need to go back there. You know, every time I, I can, I go back there. And that it's so much builds your consistency quite a bit, you know? It takes the emotion out of it too. So like yeah. if, you, if you don't play the box games or have that kind of training and you miss a shot, you get frustrated. When you are, have that purpose, like you said, have that mentality, okay, I know I got to go here and I got to go here. All of a sudden you missed a shot and you're like, all right, whatever, you know, I, I just got to execute that, that. But if you're just hitting cross courts, it's too emotional based or like that zone tennis is very emotional based. So that's why I feel like a lot of WTA is playing zone tennis and fine. Hey, like I said, but I would be playing box tennis, like bottom line, like, like you said, I would say these box systems are, if they, if players start to learn this at a younger age, like if you have a, like a, like I said, a 11, like 11 UTR, 15, 16 year old, and he understands a box system early, they'll mm. destroy it. You can see Sinner starting to get it. Like, so I watched Sinner a little bit this past spring and he's doing it. He's doing some form of box training and it's getting better. Alcaraz is doing some form of box training. He's getting better. Uh, Felix, not so much. I thought I had more hopes. I thought he was doing box training. And then more, the more I watch, he's just doing zone, zone tennis or like spot tennis, like team. That's where I'll, I'll joke around the writing. I'll question the level of coaching. I'll be like, this is like silly, but then who am I, right? So I'm some guy from Massachusetts, never coach on tour, blah, blah, blah. But I've coached at a decent level for college. I don't know. I, I would be doing box training if I was a kid these days. So when I talk to, like when you ask me how the kids respond to it, I can't do box training with my daughter. She doesn't, it's, it's too much for her. She needs to work on depth. She needs to work on a little bit more technique on her backhand side. And all in all, she needs to work on motivation. She needs to go out there and just hit the bricks and start training, start running, start doing endurance stuff because she's kind of lazy. <laughs> I think but, that's most kids. I talked to another coach today about, um, you know, coaching. I, I a very talented. We just got like a sponsor, 15-year-old, and uh, it's the motivation that's the problem there. It's like going to the gym or putting in the time, like uh, off court, on court to, to build, like and be, become stronger, better, faster. And to know what what real work is these kids think they're working hard like even when i went to academy i thought i was working hard it wasn't until i started running stadium running i was like that's work you know or when i watched sampras some of the videos of him that snuck out that about how he trained i go that guy trained like a monster he was a he was a hard worker um yeah like i think i think all these uh, guys with multiple slams for a period at least they were really hard workers like and rafa and novak and Roger, they, they were hard workers for the longest period. Like they had the most willingness to put in the work over and over again to complement the talent. Like that's why there's 20 grand slams or more. Yeah. yeah. And that's, so what I want to start doing, I, I don't know if I'll do it until the falls. I want to start looking at Federer's matches from like 18, 17. And I want to see what kind of box training he was doing. So now I'm going to start, I'm going to start an analyzing his stuff. Cause I, I, I briefly looked at it. I was like, he was doing this stuff like he just 
is just a different game. It's like the one hander wasn't as polished as like a Joe Bridge from the right and left. And then Nadal is pretty polished on both sides. Um, he's, you know, but his form was so amazing. So it's a little bit different. So you take Federer and then you go to Nadal and he had both sides. Now you take Joe Rich and he's doing the, box. like, this is like, I don't know. What do you think on the box training? I'm just curious. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, no, I like, I mean, for me, it makes sense because par partly because I think it gives you a strategy, right? Like a, a lot of players struggle to have a strategy or to have a plan more than just like the opponent is not there. I'm going to hit there. Like it's like hit and hope and no plan. So, so understanding court geometry, understanding like having a plan, like one, two, three, and being able to hit spots is obviously if you can train it. I, I do think that there's probably like a level you have to reach, like, you need to be a pretty advanced players to hit these spots. Otherwise, you will struggle with other things consistency-wise, you know, to get the depth. But if you're, you know, 5-0 NTRP, I'm sure you can really benefit from getting this into your system you know, anywhere from there and upwards. For the people at home, to be honest, I would, I would make a box, like, say, here, and I would just work on just singular spots. I would just hit from this box to this box until I hit I don't know, 50. I'd switch with my partner, you know, to go here. Then I would have the person, you know, hit to the outside. You, this is a tough one for a lot of players to control deep to the outside box. Like, for instance, for my daughter, she struggles here to get the ball here. Her swing is like, <laughs> it's funny, it's like a brush. I call it a brush up swing, but I never told her to brush up on the ball, which drives me bonkers. Um, but I want her finishing off this shoulder. She finishes like almost like up. Oh, so yeah, she can't I know control the ball as much. And I'm like, what? And then she keeps her elbows like really tight. And I'm like, no, just free your elbow. But anyway, she struggles to go from box four to box four. So I'll, I'll want to do stuff like that. But here's coming back to what the coach that you talked to said, you want to go hit some balls? No, I'm good. I'm like, all right, well, I have to understand that maybe they don't want it like I wanted it. So it's, it makes it, but it's a hard pill to swallow. It's like, I'm still fighting it. So it is, yeah, it is what it is. It was nice talking to you. Interesting box systems here. The IKEA box training method. <laughs> but it was interesting to hear your thoughts on Djokovic and, and why he's go, so good and what we happy amateurs can, can integrate into our own training to be a bit more consistent and a bit more clever. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, Evan. Thanks a lot. Take care. Right. Huh? See you. Bye, ciao. See you soon. <laughs>